Let's talk about people pleasing, that constant fear of what people think about us and the compulsion to please them. That's what we call an other reference programming. It's a type of meta program, an attention meta program, where your attention or the reference of how uh, well you're doing, how accepted you are, or how uh, you're being measured comes from the outside, not from the inside. When I ask clients, how do you know that you did a good job? Uh, the clients that are other reference, the ones that tend to people please, they are always answer, because I can see it in other people's faces, because I get feedback, because people are happy, because people tell me that I did well. When I ask someone that is very self-referent, how do you know that you did a good job? They answer, hmm, because I know I did because I'm satisfied with my effort or with the results, but it comes from inside always. So we have these two sides of the coin, other reference and self-reference is where you put the attention. And what do you think? You think you were born being other reference, people pleasing, worrying about what other people think about. Have you ever seen a baby or a very young child worrying like, <gasps> What does that other baby think about me? Do they approve of me? Does my mother approve of me? Obviously not, right? Now uh, we're all born completely self-referent, completely okay with ourselves. Um, and it is until later when we go through difficulties that we distort that sense of identity and we are installed or acquire a different strategy, a different meta program. In this case, the meta program of other reference. And let's see an example of how this could happen. It could happen by many, many processes. One of them could be as the same example that I gave for the conditional sense of self-worth, links in the description, if you want to go ahead and watch that video. When someone has been pressured to perform when they are a child and they were celebrated always when they perform well in school or sports and they were punished or parents disappointed when they didn't. So that creates a message, first, of the conditional sense of self-worth, that your, your sense of uh, identity, acceptance and approval is dependent on your performance, but also it creates this idea that the judges of that are other people. There are other people, my parents or my uncles or whoever it is, or my peers, those are the ones that have the power to judge if I do well or not. So that creates this sort of attention on other people. And they are the ones that can reassure me or that can judge me. That's another reference meta program. There are many different processes that can cause this sort of uh, programming or strategy. Another one could be having an alcoholic father or violence at home. I have worked with clients that grew up with alcoholic parents and um, they always felt very insecure when their parent was around drunk. I remember a client that as a young child, her mother used to come home completely drunk and she would yell and slam the doors and sing and cry and sing again and laugh. And she felt really, really afraid. She was very young. Uh, so she was always on the lookout, always looking out to see if her mother was drunk and sober. So she linked the state of the other person, the state of her mother, and she linked it to her safety. So when her mother was drunk, she was already feeling unsafe. And when her mother was sober, she felt safe. That creates that meta program, that strategy of survival of other reference, where I'm always as a child looking out to see if the other person is drunk, to see if I'm unsafe, or to see if everything's fine, if they're sober and I'm finally safe. Obviously, violence, alcoholism, abandonment, and um, being pressured hard to perform, all those things can create uh, this strategy, this meta program of, of attention in the other person, the other reference meta program. And that is not an ideal thing. We want to please people because we want to please people, because we like people and we want to please them. We want to see them happy. We want to do something nice for them. We want to show them that we love them. That's absolutely fine. Please do so. However, it's not okay when we are compelled to do so 
just because we want to feel safe or accepted or approved of. Most of people obviously are not conscious of these. This is a completely non-conscious strategy. They just know that they are people pleasers. They can't say no. They're worried about what other people think. They have no idea what's going on. What is really going on is that every time they're people pleasing, what they really want to do is to feel accepted, approved and safe, uh, avoid confrontation at all costs because that's what happened in their childhood or teenage years or whenever that happened. And they learned the strategy to deal with this as a coping mechanism to feel safe or accepted or approved of. And this is something very important, especially for content creators, artists, writers, and people that create in the world, uh, even for coaches. I have worked with many coaches that are other reference and they're trying to please their clients. It's an absolute disaster. You cannot be trying to please your client. You're there to support them, to help them achieve what they want. You cannot be trying to please them. Those things don't go well together. And the same with content creators. I have worked with content creators that lose sleep or lost sleep in the past because of the comments that people left in YouTube. That's obviously not ideal. I mean, the internet is full of trolls and people are very unhappy and they take that as a way to feel better about themselves or cope with that anger or whatever they have inside. You cannot take that seriously. Um, and it's just not ideal. So I've worked with influencers. I also work with artists that are very concerned about what people think about their art and that influences the way they develop their art and they do their art. The worst thing that you can do is to write a song so other people like it or to write a book so other people like it because it becomes soulless. It loses originality, it loses your own personal stamp and people love when you create for you. The best way to write a book is when you write it for yourself. You don't write for other people. You write because you want to write that book. You, you create your art because that's the way you want to express yourself. And many people fall in love with that type of expression of yourself, with that originality or uniqueness that you bring uh, to the art or to the writing or whatever area that you're uh, dealing with. So we want to make sure to be able to have that independence, that spaciousness, that distance, that whatever people think about you or their opinions are just their opinions. That doesn't mean that we cannot take feedback or we cannot um, connect and understand what other people are going through. Of course we can. Uh, someone can give me feedback about my work, but I'm the one who analyzes that feedback and who says, okay, I agree or I disagree or I'm going to take this into consideration or, or I'm going to dismiss this feedback. I'm still self-referent, uh, even if it comes from outside. I, I may even ask for that feedback or it may be given to me, but I'm the one who analyzes that. And if they say something, I have some spaciousness that that feedback doesn't define me. That feedback is only their opinion, right? So these are things that obviously you were not uh, born with. Again, as I explained, it's a strategy that you created as a way to protect yourself. And this can be reprogrammed because if it was programmed, it was acquired in the first place. If you're someone that struggles with this, go ahead and send me a message or visit my website. Uh, me or one of my coaches would be willing to work with you and happy to help you.